Hi fellas, uh, and today is uh, Inbox Review Day and today we are going to be looking at Eddard's new limited edition P for, uh, P51 Chachuga Choo Choo Okay, now this is a limited edition, the, it was uh, released uh, in time for the US Nationals uh, Today being the 25th of uh, September and, and this kit's been out a while so you would have seen it about all over there okay but this is basically my take on it um, with this kit we get one two three four five six marking options so we get three natural metal finishes and one the olive wrap finish okay so three uh, sorry six really really nice let's say three five natural metal, natural metal finish can't count now and one olive drab and all of them are really really nice <coughs> looking markings okay normal at our box boxing really really sturdy box uh, and what have you so what we'll do i'll switch you to the overhead and we'll get cracking with the inbox review so as normally you get a really really nice uh instruction booklet with uh, with eddard kits uh, this is a officially licensed product by Boeing, okay? So, yeah, and we've got a really, really nice bit of uh, art there on the front. Open it up, we've got the parts layout, and as you can see, there's some that are not going to get used in this aircraft uh, in itself, and some there will be. Uh, I do know that they are releasing a later uh, sorry, an earlier version without the fillet on the on the back. So look out for that. The colours we've got are Aquarius, Miss Colour and Mish, Mission Models. Okay, all the way through with the Super Metallic and the Mr. Metal colours on there. So that's the first page. And then we move straight into the instructions and getting this aircraft actually built. So we start off as with anywhere in the cockpit so we get a really really nice seat with some foot weight uh, seat belts moving on to the floor and the fuel tank where the radio goes okay then on to the sidewall and whether you want to do it PE or non PE with the red shading meaning that's the last bit there where you take off so you remove that and then the wall the uh, cockpit walls then fit into the actual cockpit and the fuselage both sides so that's the other side with a separate fillet for the actual uh, air outlet for the radiator some more fault wedge parts here to go on to the met the uh, the office look a lot better and we've got a fault wedge grill and the fuselage actually going together and then, which is always nice on some on Eddard kits, we get a fully detailed uh, undercarriage bay. Now that you'll find this in the Spitfire and in the 109s, really, really nice detail. But this one seems to be a whole a whole new level. So you can see we've got the uh, fuselage, the uh, sorry, the wheel bay roof with some pillars and uh, stanchions or whatever you want to call them going in there. And then we've got the wings mating together and then the guns, the 50 cals actually slotted into place. We then move on to joining the fuselage and the actual wings together with a novel way of doing the actual uh, wing lights. So you can see where it just slots in. So that would help you paint it, grip it. So when you push it in, once you've built this finish, it should look really, really nice. <clears throat> now we move on to the control surfaces on the uh, on the tail, and then we move back into the cockpit and doing the instrument panel. So we some fault wedge, uh, the the uh, control, uh, the the rudder controls and the actual like fillet that fits on top of the uh so the the coning i think it's called so the cockpit coning that slots into the actual fuselage tailwheel two-part tailwheel okay and how it actually is meant to sit into there 
and then we've got another little fillet that goes in for the uh, this little duct here and the air uh, outlet take and then we've got this for the for the belly radiator some little bits for the wheel wells all round and then this is a nice touch you've either got the the grills uh, with the holes in or not whichever version you are doing and then we move on to the wheels so the undercarriage legs and how they will go together I don't actually don't actually know what that is but I'm sure we'll find that out once we start building it okay you don't want to look at that when we, when we start building see if we can determine what that is and then going on to the actual uncarriage legs and then again the control surface but nice little bit it's a foot wedge for the so you can have the flaps down and then we move on to the the masks itself so we've got the mask for the uh the canopies so the windscreens and the three different canopies that you would be uh, potentially use and then we've got some for the the wheels is that the wheels yes some for the for the wheels as well okay and then put them all together all right some more bits for a masking look you can see just for the masking masking okay for the that really really is going to a lot of detail so on the bay doors you've either got a bit that's yellow chromate and a bit of silver or another bit that's yellow chromate so they've actually supplied you the mask set so you can do that so you can do that correctly that's really really nice that is then putting the the bay doors onto the actual aircraft and then we're looking at the exhaust stack so different types whether they're shrouded or not and then the propellers and then onto the actual uh, canopy uh, and the windshield and the uh, the, the uh, site the gun site and then the paper tanks or the uh, I don't know whether they were 500 litre tanks or 50 litre or wherever they were tanks and then you make your choice which ones you want and then we come on to the markings so first up we've got the name that the one that's named the kits after the Chachuga Chu uh, which is flown by Lieutenant Edward F. Pogue from 17, 79th uh, Fighter Squadron, uh, 20th Fighter Group, and I don't know what 8th F is, 8th Air Force, 8th Air Force, okay. So yeah, a lot of long names for these uh, these aircraft, well, these air, these squadrons, the units. So Kingcliff, United Kingdom, 1945. And then we've got uh, Lieutenant Clarence Brodsky, 334th Fighter Squadron, 4th FG, 8th uh, Air Force, Deb Dan, Deb Dan, United Kingdom, Autumn 1944. So again, a nice, nice scheme, that with a red tail and the, the big Meg on the side. Then we've got Captain Freddy Oars from 2nd Squad, uh, Fighter Squadron, 52nd uh, Fighter Group, uh, based out of Italy in autumn 1944 lovely one that with a nice big red uh, yellow tail uh, some nice markings on the actual uh, nose itself marie then we've got roving rondo this is one i'm going to do i've just recently done a, uh, a metal finish so i'm going to do this one i've never done a mustang in olive drab so i thought it'd be quite cool, cool. lieutenant irvin snyder sender Okay, from 364th Fighter Squadron, 357th uh, Fight Group, 8th Air Force in Leaston, United Kingdom, April 1945. So near the end of the war. Uh, and then we've got Lieutenant William C. Chaltrans, 357th Fight Squadron, uh, 355th Fight Group uh, from Steeple Morden in United Kingdom, 1944. Okay, so that's Miss Steve. All right, and then the final one, Caroline, uh, from Lieutenant P. Uh, Thomas P. Smith, 370th Fight Squadron, 315th, 59th Fight Group, 8th Air Force, East Wentham, United Kingdom, November 1944. Okay, so that's all the paint scheme. And then what's really, really interesting is that they tell you 
what is actually a natural metal finish and what is an aluminium lacquer. So as you can see, the darker area on these wings, they weren't natural metal finish. These, all the rivets on the wings were putted and then it was painted an aluminium lacquer. And then the rest of the fuselage, as you can see, apart from some of the control surfaces, were all natural metal finishes. All right. So it tells you straight away what's what and where they should be. And then we've got all the stencil data. OK, even down to the stencil data on the actual uh, undercarriage legs. Look at that. <laughs> yeah. All the way around. All right. I never knew they had them all the way down there. I've built a few Mustangs in my time. OK, so that's the actual instruction manual. We'll get the the plastic out. So in the actual box, you get two bags of grey plastic, some photo etch, some mass and a bag of clear plastic. So we'll start off with the actual wings. Now, there's a very good reason I'm starting with the wings. And hopefully you'll see in a minute. And again, Go from with these Eddard kits, the bags are all reusable. So, as you can see, I'll just show you this one here. This wing here, okay. There is no rivet detail at all, apart from, you know, a few around some of the control surfaces and what have you. But then, we move on to some of the, some of the control surfaces. And if I tilt that, you can see that lovely, lovely rivet detail there. And then we'll move on to, to the underneath of the wing. Again, no rivet detail. And then we we'll move down to the belly of the aircraft. You can actually see all that lovely, lovely detail again. One downside with this, which I've just noticed, is that is bent. And I think, to be fair, that's a problem with most of these kits. Okay, that's coming bent out of the factory. It's not a major issue, as long as I'm careful with it, I should be able to fix it because I think uh, there's a plate that goes in there that that glues to. And we move on to, again, the control surfaces. Again, you can see that detail there on both sides and on the actual movable. So that the tail uh, horizontal stabilizers and the actual tail control surfaces. Again, some really, really nice detail. Okay, and then we can see where we're where we can drill out all the places, all the bits for the actual um, stores. You've got bits where you can cut out, okay, for uh, if you're going to use, use any aftermarket um, weapons, parts, or anything like that. Okay, so that's the first way through. Moving on to the next one. So the next one, we've got the fuselage and the all the bits and pieces. So in this bag there are three uh three sprues so first up we have got the fuselage parts and then if i show you so you can see from the fuselage all the detail okay, all the way down now i have built like i said I've built a few mustangs in my time i've mainly built well i've only built a tamiya mustang okay and that has got none of this detail. Yes, it's got all the panel lines, but it has not got any of this rivet detail or fastener details or anything like that. Tail, tail control surface, vertical stabilizer. Okay, you can see uh, on the rudder, that's a uh, fabric. So you can see it's replicated really, really nicely. And the two different fin fillets. So one was uh, field applied, one wasn't. I don't know which one was, but there we go. Then we're looking at some of the, oh, there's actually four sprues in this bag. So four sprues, we're looking at the cockpit parts. So there you can see one side of the cockpit wall and then the instrument panel. Again, you can replace that with a photo wedge and then all the knobs and switches all the way around and the propellers, fuel tank, props, spinner and look even even on that prop spinner look i hope you can see that detail on there so eddard have really gone to town with this okay they have done so far as well as i can tell a fantastic job 
Next up, we have got some undercarriage parts. So we've got the the wheel bays again with some raised rivet detail. Uh, the actual undercarriage doors again, all that lovely detail on there, and the actual other part of the doors. Uh, two parts for the actual uh, wheel bay walls. We've got the the wheels, all right, with the spokes and the cross hatch tires. Now, the bad thing about this is obviously they are two parts. So, if I was going to improve on anything, it would be maybe getting some resin wheels for this. Uh, the one of the problems that we had when the this was first released was short shot on the actual exhaust and as you can see apart from a little bit of flash they're all there but more importantly they're actually hollowed out which is good okay really really well done uh, same in the actual 50 cals you can see they're all hollowed out ready and waiting next up we have got some of the stores so within this aircraft all you'll be using is the paper tanks or the uh, 550 50, I can't remember 50 gallon 50 gallon it might have been uh, tanks and the bits that actually attach it to the to the underside of the aircraft all the other parts will probably be for a, uh, a later release by Eddard next up normal spoke tire type wheel for the the clear parts and yeah they're fabulously clear as per normal and with lots of rivet detail on the wing screen and round the actual thing itself so yeah really really fantastic and there are the the two lights so you'll be able to paint them on this on the sprue Take them off, just click them just down there, and then they should insert into the the actual wing. Let's stop. We've got a mass set. Okay, so uh, I don't know whether they're going to be die cut, laser cut, or wherever. All right. And then a photo etch part. So we've got a colour photo etch with harnesses, instrument panel, grills, and all that sort of good stuff. And then we'll move on to these decals. So these are made in Czech Republic. So these are actually Eddard's own markings. And right. Now, I don't know if you're going to be able to. Okay. If I tilt that, you can see that shiny bit there. So you've got uh, something to point with. So you've got the edge of the decal, and then if I just tilt it, you've got the carrier film. Now, if I go up, there's no carrier film going around the top of that thing. You can see even better where those... Now, I'm not saying that's gonna be a problem, okay? But what you've gotta be aware of, if that's moved up and printed not quite central, you might actually, you can probably see it actually, on this part here so if i tilt it to a light you can see the carry film see how the carry film is the the clear part and then we've got the yellow part just there and it goes round see how it's just missing just a little bit can you see the shade difference so that could cause problems because some of these letterings some of these squares are really really close off so uh, when it's been printed instead of printing it square on it it's as if it's been printed slightly up okay by about a mil or so now it, i can't see it being a massive problem but it's something to be aware of especially like i said on something like that okay i don't know whether it's going to affect the stars and bars or not Or any of the others, 
but it's going to be quite close. Ideally, you want that all centralized. So when you put it in, you, you know, you've got the center, the, the bit in there. So we'll see how these react for the, the smaller ones uh, and what have you. Yeah. See, especially like in this bit here. So this bit here is for the on the Mustang on the on the no, it's just under the just under the prop right there. There's a, a grill, an opening. So that bit there is designed for that grill. Now if the carry film's not quite sitting right, that is not going to sit in that place properly. Okay, so that's something to be aware of. Okay. So that's Eddard's uh, 148th P47 Mustang Chachuga Chew. Chew. I know. <laughs> uh, and, I, you know, can't fault their engineering or their actual work, the detail on it. Where it's been let down is these decals. Now, normally, normally, The decals from Eddard are cartograph, and there's normally not a problem. Okay, these are really, really thin. Uh, they look really, really nice. But just because they're slightly off, the carrier film is whether they're going to react, or not react, act how you would want them to, because they're all slightly off. And you saw that one on the nose, because that slit is going to be a little bit, you know, a little bit lower than where it should be. So it's whether it's going to work properly. The again, these big ones on the nose. Again, they're all a, a full decal, and, and they wrap around the chin as well. So again, would that be a problem? No, it's not. It's not. No, it's not a major issue. It's just something you need to watch out for. And I do see people that do struggle with decals. So something like this, they might see that and. Mm. Yeah, so yeah, it's something to, to be aware of, obviously. But other than that, okay, it's a cracking kit. A really, really good kit. Uh, yeah, I think you'll enjoy it. I think a lot of people have been building this kit and they seem to enjoy it. And I think uh, anybody with, you know, intermediate type skill should not have a problem with this kit at all. Uh, even an experienced beginner, if that makes sense, would, would really relish this kit and love it because it should go together really, really well. Um, some of the best kits I've ever built have been Eddard, Hellcat, Spitfire. So, yeah, these should be should work really, really well. Anyway, that's it for now, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye, fellas.